40 years ago, the giant robot known as Gundam first launched into battle in the 1979 anime classic, Mobile Suit Gundam. And now we have anime fans and model hobbyists all around the world enjoying and creating their own Gundam plastic models, or Gunpla for short. So how exactly do we get from this to this? Let's find out. Following the end of World War II, a tin toy production boom started up in Japan. At the same time, fantasy cyborgs and robots like Astro Boy and Tetsujin 28 Go began to capture the imaginations of Japanese children everywhere. Beginning in Japan in the late 60s, toy companies and TV shows struck a lucrative deal to provide a one-two rocket punch of the entertainment du jour for kids. Mobile Suit Gundam was the result of one such deal between toy company Clover and later toy company Bandai and TV company Sunrise. What made the resulting models memorable 40 years later? Simply put, the Gundam design offered mecha fans something different. At the same time that Mobile Suit Gundam aired, the trend in mecha anime was Super Robots. In the late 70s, anime was overwhelmed by bright, flashy, and totally unrealistic mecha designs. The more elaborate, the better. Gundam's contemporary included Get a Robo G, Great Mazinga, and Divine Demon Dragon Gai King, all of whom had gimmicks and gadgets and completely unfeasible transformation sequences. These robots strive to be more human-like in appearance and function. And then came Gundam. I'll never forget those first designs. Nothing has been able to surpass them to date. Mobile Suit Gundam director Yoshiyuki Tomino said in a 2018 interview with NHK. He was talking about the works of mecha designer Kunyu Okawara for Mobile Suit Gundam. In the midst of crazy and colorful contemporary mecha world, Okawara envisioned what would later be known as the real robot genre, the polar opposite of the status quo, super robots. The Gundam, with its understated scheme and practical functionality, seemed to answer the question, what would mecha be like if they were used in military warfare? War machines would look more like the Gundam than the average super robot toy. We can hardly imagine soldiers manning a red, blue, and highlighter yellow tank. Unfortunately, the kits didn't even make it to the store shelves before Mobile Suit Gundam was canceled. Due to uninspired sales numbers, the show's toy company sponsor, Clover, backed out. After that, the show was cut to just 43 episodes from an intended 50. Neither kids nor sci-fi fans were interested in Clover's bizarre, barely recognizable Gundam toys. I mean, just look at it. What the hell is going on? After Clover exited, an up-and-coming toy company named Bandai worked out a deal with Sunrise just in time to introduce a revolutionary new type of easy-to-build mecha kit based on the just-finished show. Fans eagerly bought up the first Gundam plastic model. This early kit, released in July 1980, was 5 inches tall. It costed about 300 yen, or about $3. Combined with its novel design, the first Gundam was a quick build and easy to put together. Even kids could build their own fairly accurate version of the soon-to-be iconic Gundam from TV. Gundam model sales continued steadily, until Studio Sunrise could leverage a brand new Gundam series based on their Gunpla success. Yoshiyuki Tomino got a green light to create a sequel and keep those mechas coming. Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam saw renewed interest in Gunpla popularity, as fans bought up not only the Zeta Gundam, but its many ally and antagonistic Mobile Suit models. Unlike its predecessor, Zeta Gundam was an instant hit. Audiences were ready to move beyond super robots and immerse themselves in Gundam's realistic military mecha drama. And there was no doubt that it was consistently steady plastic model sales that spurred on the franchise's success. As plastic injection technology improved, Sunrise Studio, then sponsor and now parent company Bandai, got Gunpla development down to a science. By the mid 80s, they were producing the earliest versions of a type of Gunpla you can still make today. Just open the box, separate the pieces from the plastic runners, called sprues, and snap them together according to the instructions. You don't need any glue or paint or even patience to make a great looking kit with multiple colors and dozens of poses, which is why Gundam endures as a hobby for all skill levels to this day. In the 80s, Gunpla kits did not have a standard size or level of difficulty. But since 1990, when Bandai began building Gundam models using their own bespoke technology, the way we describe and categorize Gunpla models have been standardized. We refer to these two main classifications as grade and scale. Grade refers to detail and complexity of the model. A high grade kit like the RX-78 I'm building right now is the most common grade and is a good pick for beginners. 
The high grade was first released in 1990 and characterized by a multicolored plastic injection modeling. It first retailed for about a thousand yen or 10 to 9 bucks American. Today, these are considered simple, quick builds without too many parts, but at the time they were first introduced, they marked a new era in Gunpla model accuracy. The model fans could buy looked more like the mecha on TV than ever before. I mean, just look at the Clover one. God damn. Advanced builders can move on to master grade, like this thick ashtray red frame, which features a modular inner skeleton inside each build for an added flexibility. The first master grades were released in 1995 and cost 2,500 yen, or about 25 bucks. The grade was originally designed to be used for a select number of models to commemorate Gundam's 15th year anniversary, but the popularity of these more accurate models is why they're being manufactured to this day. Now for those looking for an even greater challenge can advance to the Rolls Royce of the Gunpla classification, perfect grade kits. The first perfect grade Gunpla appeared in 1998 and cost 12,000 yen or about 120 bucks. Perfect grades are so extremely detailed that they can take weeks to construct. Some even include bells and whistles like an internal LED light system and specialized stands. Now I'm too poor for the perfect grade, so uh, here's an image. Nice. Over the years, Bandai Hobby has experimented with dozens of other grades. They often indicate an advance in gunpla making technology. For example, the real grade line introduced in 2010 takes the inner skeleton of the master grade line and brings it down to a much smaller scale. Now, previously, it would have been impossible to achieve this much detail at a small scale, but we in the future now, baby. Second classification is scale. Scale refers to the physical size of the finished model in proportion to its real world counterpart. For example, a Gundam model that is 1 1 44th scale is 1 1 44th the size that the mecha's actual size would be. By the way, the Gundam statue in Gundam Base Tokyo is actually 1 to 1 scale. You can see it in Odaiba Tokyo. And here's a photo of me in front of the old 1 to 1 Gundam. Good times. Other than that enormous anomaly, all Gunpla are manufactured in one place, the Bandai Hobby Factory in Shizuoka, Japan. Employees take this job very seriously. For example, everyone who works in the factory wears a uniform that resembles Gundam's fictional Earth Federation, and they get badges that look like military rankings as they get promoted. Additionally, this factory is designed to look a lot like the anime with a lot of sci-fi touches. Some of the machines that inject plastic models are painted to look like the Gundam mix that they are helping to create models of. The forklifts that carries the Gunpla are designed to look more like an armored Xeon model. The mending machines look like Gundam. Even the toilets are designed to look like Gundam cockpits. It's no wonder that the factory itself is a major tourist destination for Gundam fans. But be warned, prospective tourists have to schedule far in advance and tours are often sold out. From Shizuoka, Gunpla model kits travel all over the world to fans and hobbyists. Today, there are more than 2,000 different Gunpla kits based on the many mechas featured in more than 20 and counting Gundam animes. Bandai Hobby isn't the most open about their sales data, but in 2015, they reported that since they started in 1980, they've sold 450 million Gunplas worldwide. That's a lot of plastics. Gunpla arrived en masse in English-speaking countries in the early 2000s, along with Toonami hit Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. But first, to fit into Cartoon Network's all-American blend of Doritos and extreme Do The Do style advertising, the Gundam brand got a bit of a makeover. Vintage Gunpla commercials have not aged well, to say the least. In one Cartoon Network ad, a rugged American voiceover urges kids to build Gunpla because Earth is in trouble. In another infamous ad, American kids of all ages rank their Gunpla builds on how long they took, as if the real draw of Gunpla was turning it into a competitive speed-based sport. What's your level of commitment? Boy, times have changed. Thank God. In the magazines, because they were still a thing back in my days, between ads for Gushers and Game Boys, you could find a particularly flashy Gunpla ad that showed two mecha models apparently mid-showdown in a torn-up suburban home. Careful where you build them. The advertisement warns as if Gunpla building is some kind of contact sports. Or were they insinuating that the Gunplas will come alive and destroy your entire room? Mysterious. Since the early days, the advertising method has streamlined considerably, 
Much like Legos, Gunpla rely not on written instructions in any language, but on a series of visual instructions with numbers and letters. You don't need to know English, Japanese, or any other language for that matter to build Gunpla. Here's a fun fact about the Western market's favorite Gunpla kits. Even now, Western fans buy up Gunpla based on the mobile suits of Gundam Wing at a higher rate than any other Gundam model. According to Xavier Lim, the senior brand manager of US Gunpla distributor Bluefin, now Bandai Namco Collectibles, Death Psych, Wing Zero, and Heavy Arms continue to be the American bestsellers. He added that any time a new Gundam show comes out, it does cause a temporary spike in new model sales too. So lately, Gundam NT kits have been having a small boom thanks to the recent movie release. It's a booming business. In 2016, Lim said the company predicted sales of Gundam Barbados, the lead mobile suit from mobile suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans. Damn, that's a great ending. <gasps> Anyway, the Barbados Gunpla would move 20,000 to 30,000 in the United States alone. Again, that's a lot of plastic. Gunpla remain popular because anybody can build them. You don't need to know how to paint or sculpt or pose your kit in order to have fun. It's difficult to capture the feeling of building a Gunpla kit until you've tried it for yourself. For those of us who have spent most of our work time or free time staring at a screen, it can be a welcome respite to create something real with your hands. Gunpla with its straightforward visual manual and uniformly injected molded pieces simply require you to follow the instructions. When you finally get each piece in place, nothing beats the crisp clack of the plastics as the pieces click together. Ah. Gunpla ASMR. Even so, some hobbyists have elevated Gunpla building to an art form. Elite builders will spend weeks sanding down the plastic, repainting, and constructing elaborate dioramas to make their Gunpla kits stand out. If builders want more of a challenge, they can enter their creation into the Gunpla Builders World Cup. Yes, there is a World Cup for Gunpla building, and yes, it's awesome. It's also an official Bandai hobby backed competition that is open to hobbyists in 16 countries around the globe. Let me list them right now. It includes Japan, China, South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, Australia, Italy, France, Vietnam, USA, and Canada. Now, what makes these contestant Gunplas particularly special is that they aren't built straight out of the box. No, that'd be too easy. What are you, some kind of Gunpla pleb? Contestants will frequently develop unique creations by combining parts of one or more kits in the process called kit bashing. This can call for some advanced techniques. Some builders use modeling clays to sculpt custom parts to merge two kits together. They may also cut down pieces, melt pieces together, or even 3D print whole new pieces. Top it all off with a slick airbrushed custom paint job, and the judges will never know if it was anything other than a polished, one-of-a-kind kit. Anyone over 15 years old can enter. Just submit your build into the qualifier round at a local anime convention. In America, for example, there are live regional competitions at conventions like Anime Central and Anime Expo, plus one online competition for builders who can't get in there in person. How nice. The winners then compete to become the US representative and battle it out in the global stage. So far, nobody from the US or Canada has ever taken first prize, but that doesn't mean that the first person to achieve that feat couldn't be you or me. Who knows? Indisputably, the world's most talented gunpla builder is Katsumi Kawaguchi, a Bandai hobby employee who has earned the honorary title Majin. If you've ever watched Gundam Build Fighters, you might be surprised to learn that Majin Kawaguchi is based on a real person. Before the launch of the Gundam Build Fighter series, I was already aware that there would be a character named Majin Kawaguchi, Kawaguchi said in a 2016 interview. But when I actually watched the character on TV, I couldn't stop smiling. Now that is simply adorable. He may not always wear cool shades like his anime counterpart, but Meijin Kawaguchi's skill is just as legendary. Since joining the Bandai Corporation in 1985, he has pioneered gunpla model making and construction techniques that have helped standardize the way gunplas are constructed and assembled even now. He is also the senior judge for the Gunpla Builders World Cup. And today, you can find these tutorials on his Facebook page where he posts in both English and Japanese 
and just want to help you enjoy the hobby of Gunpla. Whether you're a beginner or the Majin himself, Gunpla is a hobby based on accessibility. Kits are sold everywhere from Barnes & Noble, GameStop, and even the Crunchyroll store. Go to store.crunchyroll.com. Low initial prices ensure that you can buy a basic high-grade kit for around 15 bucks and get started right away. Many local games and hobby stores sponsor build days, in-person events in which modelists can get together and build Gunpla and other models together. Since the 1970s, people have been making TV mechas their own with increasingly simple, available Gunpla kits. From high grade to perfect grade, from beginner to senior meister. All you need to make Gunpla is a model kit and the willingness, determination to bring your favorite mecha model to life. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, press the bell icon too, and comment your favorite uh, Gunpla kit or Gundam series. And be sure to watch any of our numerous Gundam titles on Crunchyroll.com. All right, bye-bye now. Bye-bye now.